I haven't got a nickel to my name The wolf and I are just about to meet But rich or poor, your pocketbook's the same When your heart's on easy street The only clothes I own are out of press My only pair of shoes are not so neat But you can do with just a little less When your heart's on easy street Do 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 What do I want with money? Another name for worry and care My life is milk and honey Have you ever seen a happy millionaire? Philosophy is effective in a way It makes you think the world is mighty sweet You get a new perspective every day When your heart's on easy street What do I want with money? Another name for worry and care Oh, my life is milk and honey Have you ever seen a happy millionaire? Complaining never does a bit of good And smiling is a trick that can't be beat You're living in a lovely neighborhood When your heart's on a busy street All right, partner, stretch your muscles and reach for it. Higher. Where's your gun? I haven't got a gun. I haven't any money either, if that's what you're after. What is this, a hold-up? Well, what do you think it is? I got a gun on you, haven't I? Now step back and keep him up. I'm stealing your horse. No, you're not. I need him. Oh, yeah? Well, I need him a lot worse than you do. There's a posse hot on my heels, and I'm in a desperate mood. Why, I'm a rough, tough, fighting mad grizzly. <laughs> a grizzly? You look more like a teddy bear to me. What happened? Oh, nothing. Just a little saloon brawl. But that's the way it is in this town. One cross look down your nose, and boom! They clap you right in jail. Hey, you put your hands down, didn't you? Sure, I'm tired. Well, put them up. Looks like you walk, partner. One more move and you're dead. All right, mister, you asked for it. I'm gonna count ten. If you're not off that horse by then, you're completely dead. One, two, three, four. Get down, will you? Five, six. I counted a six. Did you hear that? Do I hear seven? Eight, nine. I'm sorry I had to get rough, Teddy Bear, but you sort of had me in a spot. Ah, nice work, fella. There's a reward for capturing him, and it looks like you'll get it. Capturing who? You don't mean my pal Teddy Bear here. Pal? You two guys don't look very chummy. <laughs> you mean this? Well, he was just showing me his new gun. Yeah, I was just showing him. Quiet, you. Oh, so you two are buddies, eh? Maybe you both better come along with us then. We've got a nice cell reserved for guys like you. All right, climb on that horse and let's get going. Now you got yourself in a spot. Why don't you just turn me in, collect the 50 bucks reward, and be done with it? <laughs> I don't want that kind of money. Sticking your old neck out to help me, after I tried to hijack you, too. Hmm. Gosh. You almost revived my faith in human nature. <laughs> Been running in tough luck, huh? Yeah. I reckon I'm just a problem child. Doggone it. If we have to ride these two fellas into town, we'll miss the big shindig at the Adams Ranch. Yeah, it's gonna be a swell show, too. Old man Adams hired some swell talent for the party this year. Sorry, fellas, but we've got to take in all vagrants. Well, hold on a minute. You fellas flew off the handles fast. You didn't give me a chance to explain. Explain what? 
Teddy Bear and I were hired to entertain at this party at the uh, uh, Adams Ranch. Entertain? Me? Why, sure, no party would be complete without your golden voice. Well, if that's the case, us fellows will give you an escort right to the Adams Ranch. Well, that's darn nice of you, but Chuck, you don't need to go to all that trouble. Oh, no trouble at all. Of course, if we find out you're lying about this job, we'll just have to give you another escort back to the city jail. They celebrate, they yes, Don't say it's a great day, it's a great day, wait and see. Blue sky bringing a song from Bluebird, winging along a song. Dad's a natural showman. He doesn't throw a party, he stages it. Yes, sir. Don't say it's a great day, it's a great day, wait and see. Blue sky, bringing the song. From blue bird, winging along. A party full of sunshine, it's a gold mine from a day. I'm on the opinion, you feel like a million that it has. a good show. Unless it's making a hundred dollar bet. The combination of the two has kept me entertained. Mm -hmm. And slightly broke. That's why they call them that a hundred Adams. That name led me to expect a flowered vest cameos and a few aces up your sleeve. At the risk of disappointing you, Miss Sophie, I must confess that I'm respectable. Oh, please don't apologize. I think you're positively rugged. And I adore your ranch and all those wild horses you grow. <laughs> and the scenery, it's so close to nature. You see, Kim? Miss Sylvie thinks this is a pretty good place to be. Well, I do too, Dad, for a few weeks. And you light out for Broadway again? Yes, honey. Our show starts again in September. What'll I do with you then, Schnooky? She's new. I just bought it to come out here. Miss Sylvie, whatever made you buy anything so silly looking as uh, Schnooky? My friends. They told me if I was going out west, I'd better get a long little doggy. <laughs> Let us give many thanks and a big round of applause to my good boss and your good friend, Mr. Better Hundred Adams. They just don't grow them that handsome. The Morales family does. That's one, Dad's foreman. Instead of a speech, I'm going to do a little bragging. You all know that my daughter, Kim, has been doing pretty well on the stage. And I'm not denying that I'm proud of her. So why shouldn't I show her off? Kim, I know this is sudden. But how about a song for the folks? I'm flattered and bewildered and befuddled no end. This reception is really too much. Now, I'll tell you a story that I hope you'll enjoy. A song with an old-fashioned touch. They still talk about her in Podunk. The lady who never returned. She's ruled conversation for three generations. I'll give you as much as I've learned. She arrived into town on a Friday or Saturday. I may be wrong, but I think it was the latter day. Speaking of her, they refer to the girl with the high button shoes. What her name was to this day is still quite a mystery, but she's a character in local history. Wives give a sneer when they hear of the girl with the high button shoes. She was some stuffin', she had the fellas puffin', she was the weekend rage. Even grandpappy, her grandma wasn't happy at his age, at his stage. When she walked on a Sunday, they all up and followed her. Then on a Monday, the earth up and swallowed her. Each local gent would have gone where she went, but she left no clues. Whatever became of the girl with the high-button shoes? 
She arrived into town on the Friday or Saturday. I may be wrong, but I think it was the latter day. Speaking of her, they refer to the girl with the high button shoes. What her name was to this day is still quite a mystery. But she's a character in local history. Wives give a sneer when they hear of the girl with the high button shoes. giving you up. Oh, Adam, I have a hard time getting away from those army buyers. A lot of work to selling cavalry horses. You know that. Or do you? Oh, I may be a little rusty, but I'll soon get into the swing of it. I've been saying that for five years, and every year I walk off with a contract. Monotonous, ain't it? But you're due for a change. You can't beat my new herd. They've got tough stamina. Yes, and beauty, too. You try to sell me, try to sell the army. Why, Jingo, I will sell them. About a hundred? No. Sucker money. Don't want it. Well, Kim must be looking for me. Why, did she lose you? There's nothing lost around here but cavalry contracts and perhaps a few loans. I'll be able to pay all my creditors as soon as I make this sale. And you're at the top of the list, Brock. I'm not worrying. Maybe not, but something's got you mighty disquieted. Oh, not any longer. There she is. Hello, Broadway. Hello, Main Street. Still killing the local people? Without any effort at all. I'd really knock myself out for one small city guy. Oh, I've got a career on my mind. If that's all the competition there is, I'll resort to bribery. Take me and I'll throw in the whole town a buckaroo. You could do it, too. You practically own this town, don't you? It's my little backyard. Why don't you stay out here and play in it? How about Broadway? Uh, Maybe I could make you forget it. You birds start chirping. Well, you see, uh, uh, we didn't bring our duet music with us this time. Uh, Roy sings prettier alone. You flatter me, Teddy Bear. Uh, I'll flatter you. Well, howdy. See, I'm well known around here. Hello? Do you? I'm not too well known. All right, get singing. Well, how can it till they get to playing? Right. How will they know what you're going to sing? The trick is, will I know what they're going to play? We're in. Will haunt me 
forever. Dream so much of them. I'm Who is he? I don't know. I've held your hands across the border since we've been apart. But now I want to see things through. Back where dreams are made to order in our own rendezvous. Hands across the border calling me to you. voice. Leastways, Miss Kim didn't seem prone to argue with the singing. Miss Kim? Adam's daughter. Oh, you mean Kim. That miss kind of threw me off. Oh, allow me. I insist. You, uh, you know Kim pretty well? Sure. She told Mr. Adams if he didn't hire me to sing, she'd call the party off. Your song was a very pleasant surprise. Oh, well, thanks. <laughs> Mr. Adams was going to introduce me, but Kim thought it'd be better if I just sneak up on him. I almost ran him in for vagrancy, not knowing, of course, who he was. I still don't know him. Well, that's a coincidence. I don't believe I know you either. I'm Brock Daniels, a friend of Kim Adams. Well, if Kim okay's you, you're all right with me. I better see if I can find her. I don't want to get away without seeing her. You won't get away, or you either. I'm afraid you're not getting away with uh, whatever you're trying to get away with. I'm Kim Adams. That's all, brother. Just as I thought. A couple of saddle tramps. I'll have them in the jug in a jiffy. What for? Vagrancy. We don't tolerate it around here. Aren't you being a little severe, bro? I'm sorry, Kim. But I'm a businessman. Well, we're businessmen, too. I'm a, uh, uh... What am I? Horse I'm a horse wrangler. Roy, right, here's a, uh... A baritone. And right now, business is at a standstill. It's about to pick up. Dad would be very happy to pay you for entertaining our guests. And when one has money, one isn't a vagrant. But Kim... Yeah, that's only one. Oh, Dad has scads of horses. I imagine most of them need wrangling. Kim, I just can't find the right words to say. Well, you ought to have plenty of those. You certainly said all the wrong things back there. Well, thank you cover everything? Mm, not quite. Do you have any ulterior motive in coming here? Only that I didn't want to get pinched before I had a chance to look for a job. I see. Then your only crime is being a fast talker. Well, we're honest, Miss Kim. A couple of honest fellas don't deserve no jailing, especially that buckaroo jail. That's the worst thing I ever spent a night in. Miss Kim. The government buyers are here to see the horses, and your father would like to have them present. Oh, thank you. Uh, Juan, I've just hired these boys. I want you to put them to work. Work? This is Mr. Um... Rogers. Oh, yes, Mr. Roy Rogers. He's a very handy baritone. Excuse me. Oh, aren't they cute? Here, pull me, pull me, pull me, pull me. Cute? I'll have you know, ma'am, that's the finest string of horses that's ever been raised in Buckaroo. They're fine-looking animals, Mr. Adams. With the proper training, the cavalry could use a bunch like that. Bet a hundred? You better save your money. <laughs> Magnificent animal. Yes, triggers the prize of my string. I got him while he was running with a wild herd. Dad, you sure collect the darndest things. My daughter knows very little about horses. And that I'm trying to forget. I'll tame him down. I'll never get near enough for that horse to tame him down. There you go again, Brock, underestimating me. Why, I can ride him this minute. That calls for a bet. I know your superstition bet 100, but this time, let's make it a real bet. Superstition be hanged, 300. I've got 500, says you can't ride him right now. Put up that talking money. All right, it's a bet. Go ahead. Figure you and I are going to earn some easy money. 
You got a bet on Mr. Adams? Yes, 500. Rob Danvers says that I can't ride him. He's leery the trigger will show up his horses. Is he selling to the government, too? Not this year. That string of mine will make him eat crow. Trigger, you're the handsomest horse I ever laid eyes on. You know, I've been dreaming all my life about owning a horse like him. Well, if you ever do, young fella, remember that a fine horse is a gentleman. Treat him that way. Give him your respect and friendship. Say, who are you? Oh, I'm just a visiting wrangler. Well, stick around. We'll get along together, son. Go on. Throw a saddle on, Trigger. I got me a bet with Danvers. Gentlemen, your job has begun. Saddle Trigger so Mr. Adams can collect that bet. Is that all you got to do around here to win a bet? Is saddle a horse? No, I'm going to ride him. Oh. You sure he's ready to ride? No, but I aim to find out. Here we go. Back to work again. Saddling up a lot of trouble. Oh, my dad can ride anything on four feet to a finish. That's exactly what I'm interested in, the finish. Well, this one's going to cost you exactly $500. Hey, hey, hey. Whoa! 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 Come on! You're going to take a lot of handling. Oh. Oh. Right up, cowboy, and good luck. I've been trying to piece it together myself. Danvers raises horses, doesn't he? Yes, and generally gets the government contract. He wouldn't have this year. The boss would have walked away with it. That's what I'm getting at. He knows horses, and he knew Adam's weakness for taking a bet. The bet was in good faith. Well, I could swallow that if Danvers didn't have a reason for wanting old man Adams out of the running for that cavalry contract. Well, he's out of the running now. Miss Kim will try for it, won't she? I'm afraid she'll do just what Danvers says. Yeah, he sold her on the idea that Trigger's got to be put out of circulation. There's only one reason for that. So the Adams Ranch can't carry on the blood strain of a fine stallion. Insurance against future competition, huh? Yeah. Sure, that makes sense. Roy, I think you better hang around here. I'd kind of like to. It's Trigger. He's trying to steal the mares. He's a smart horse. Oh! 
Hey, next time you ride me, take off your spurs. Well, we got him anyway. Yeah. You better get rid of that horse. Miss Kim don't want him around. Yeah, she'll be sore as blazes. Well, I've got an idea she'll change her mind. Mr. Adams thought a lot of Trigger, and I don't think he'd want him running wild without a home. Come on, boy. I'm going to put you back in your private corral. Out of way, bub. Hey, Roy. I'll get rid of him. You wait here. Is he bossing this outfit, Miss Kim? Why not? He runs everything else. Well, I don't know anything about running a horse ranch. Well, don't take no lessons from Brock Danvers. He'll learn you wrong. All right. Come on. Here he comes, the great lover of horses. Yeah. All right, Rogers. We'll get rid of that horse. You better put that thing away because you're not going to use it. Did you ever see anyone shoot a horse? Well, it isn't a pretty sight. You wouldn't like it. Go back to the house, Kim. It's all right, Brock. He killed my father. I talked to your father just before. He said that a fine horse was a gentleman. Give him your friendship, he said. Well, right now, Trigger needs a friend. Maybe Mr. Adams was sort of electing me for the job. Well, I'm going to get this over with. I told you to put that gun away. Look out, Mr. Danvers. He'll hurt you. I'll shoot him for you. What are you shooting, ducks? Sorry, I shoved you, but I had to save your life. That horse is dangerous. I'll take my own chances, if you don't mind. Well, all right. You fellas know what's good for you. You'll clear out of this country. That's another thing he said. Stick around. We had quite a chat, Mr. Adams and me. Well, I'm going to get that horse. Come on. Listen, Juan, we can't let Trigger be killed. Mr. Adams loved him. Perhaps so, Roy, but I... I know, you're thinking he can't be handled, but you're wrong. All Trigger needs is someone who understands it. What do you say we give him a break and prove that he's really okay? Maybe Trigger didn't lose his best friend after all. Where will we find him? Most likely the place is the water hole in Tejon Canyon. That's where Denver's will look for him. We'll look first. <laughs> there is the water hole. Yeah, and there he is, hiding behind those rocks, waiting. Hey, Roy, here they come. Just wait.
Well, he ain't here. Probably skipped out from the herd and watched us go by. Yeah, probably. Well, we may as well go back to the ranch. All right, for now. But I'm coming back. I don't give up easy. Persistent cuss, ain't he? Well, what are you going to do with him now? One, do you know any place where we can keep him out of sight for a while? Yes. There is another spring back in these hills. Well, that's where we'll take him. What you going to feed him on, rocks? <laughs> Don't you know the state of your father's affairs? Why don't you get out from under? Take my offer. Sold to Brock Danvers. One broken down ranch and a bumper crop of debts. They'll be paid in full. I know why you're doing this, Brock. Of course you do. My romantic charms having failed, I'm trying to impress you with my generosity. How am I doing? Well, you're gaining on me with a devastating burst of speed. As soon as the necessary papers have been drawn up, the Adams Ranch will be sold to Brock Danvers. That's the way it's going to be, boys. Well, they didn't exactly give Brock a vote of confidence. Talk to them, Juan. Tell them that I haven't any interest in the ranch, that it's best this way. For the daughter of my friend, I would do anything. But since you'll not be needing me, there is no reason to stay on. But, Juan, there will be a great deal to do, and Mr. Danvers will want to make changes. Hiring a new foreman will be the first big step in that direction. Now I'll have no job, and the settlement will have no reason for the fiesta. <laughs> you mean they celebrate the fact that you're working? <laughs> no, to pay tribute to the Adams Ranch at the beginning of the training period of the horses. Oh. It's bad to break a custom. Superstitious? Just disappointed that Miss Kim so easily for this tradition. Will you tell your friends to go right ahead with the shindig? She'll be there. But you can't disappoint him, Miss Kim. This is a yearly custom. But it's so silly there isn't going to be any training period to usher in. I'm selling out, so what have they got to celebrate? Mm. Just your being there is excuse enough for any fiesta. Oh, isn't it lovely just to think that your mere presence is the reason for a fiasco? Fiesta, bub. Fiesta. You know, I've been riding in subways so long, I've forgotten what these open spaces really look like. It's just like any other neck of the woods. Maybe it's because I'm partial to Buckaroo. You know, my great-grandfather settled out here right after the war between the states. Perhaps you noticed him in front of the city hall sitting in his covered wagon. Parking overtime, isn't he? No, it's a statue of him in bronze. It's one of my grandfather, too. Maybe my dad would have rated one. Well, no one can deny you belong out here. It's my stamping ground. Why don't you just sort of stay around and make them proud of you? <laughs> I don't look well in bronze. <laughs> oh, this is glorious. Bury me not on the lone prairie. That tomb just haunts me. It should. Look how you murdered it. Well, my voice is a little rusty. I've been singing all year in California. Maybe that's the reason the Swallows left Campus Promise so early. Say, what kind of a sign is that? Oh, just the old Indian sign. Indian? Are you scared of Indians? Well, not if they have a cigar store behind them. Hey, let's uh, follow that trail to the skyline. Looks awful steep. Mighty pretty when you get up there, though. Why, bless your heart. I believe you just want me all to yourself. I can hardly wait. Come on, let's go. Oh, well, we've lost Teddy Burns' Sophie. Shall we go back? No, this is perfect. Ambling along in the lazy sun. And you know, there's only one thing you missed in planning this. A nice dreamy song. How did I forget that? <laughs> well, I can recapture the mood. I guess I could muster up a little too. <laughs> well, muster, Roy, and muster real pretty. Dreaming to music, that's all I do. Dreaming to music, dreams can come true. 
If mountain greenery Bores my afternoons I change the scenery Just by changing tunes Sometimes I dream of Sweet dreams indeed And in each love scene You play the lead Whoever dreams That I'd run into you Dreaming You'd buckle down and carry on with the ranch. Never mind the pep talk, Coach. It doesn't mean a thing to me. But you were born and raised out here. It's your home. Oh, it's just a batch of mortgages and debt. Brock is willing to assume all obligations and cancel debt and indebtedness in return for the ranch. Nice guy. I think so. He kind of liked you, too. <laughs> That's a gross understatement. He's slightly crazy about me. Thinking of marrying him? I'm trying with the idea. But then that presents another problem, not a wife. That's why I'm selling everything and leaving Buckaroo flat. It's the easiest way out. I think I will have a look at that statue of your great-grandpa. I want to see if it's flushing.
out in the flowers. Pero, ¿cómo puede ser eso, Rosita? But I remember the speech. These fragrant blossoms are... were for you. Their velvet petals match your eyes. Oh, Papa, they don't match your eyes at all. What kind of flowers is it you're not presenting? Red roses and her eyes are blue. All right. So they're forget-me-nots, which you have forgotten, along with the speech, which you better forget. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Adams, your father called us his friends. May we be your friends, too? Yes. Thank you. Would you excuse me? But of course. Why didn't you tell them? Why didn't you tell them all? I didn't have the heart, Miss Kim. Well, I can't. What? Oh, I can fix it. Folks, uh, Miss Kim has something she wants to tell you. Well, it, it's only that I, I... I hope you'll always think as kindly of me as you do today. Thank you. Muy bien, muy bien. Bueno, ahora, divertirnos, señores. Divertirnos. One should have told them. That wasn't fair to me. It was hitting below the belt. Well, I sure sympathized with you while Mr. Morales was given out with that friendship talk. Wasn't that awful? Well, no. I thought it was a very nice speech. Now I'm in a fine spot and I don't know how to get out of it. Send them a note. That's an easy way out. Dear employees. They're more than that. They're Dad's friends and mine. All right. Dear friends, you're all fired. Yes, I know. Me too. I'll hit the road. That's right. Run out on the ranch just when it's bogged down with debt. And when we've got a bunch of horses to be trained. Oh, but Mr. Danvers will shoulder all your responsibilities. Just you head for Broadway. The Adams don't give up that easily. Do you know what they do? No. They drive covered wagons. Yeah? Yeah. And they turn the wilderness into the finest horse ranch in the West. No. Yes. And they hang on to that ranch and get government contracts for this year and the next and the next. They did. I'll bet a hundred they do. You're going to look mighty cute in bronze. go every afternoon. I know. Teddy Bear told me. But he said he'd knock me for a loop if I told you Roy was planning to knock you for a loop. With what? A horse. A big blonde horse. Climb in one. Why didn't you tell me about this? Maybe because Roy wanted to give Trigger a chance to prove himself to you. And you knew all along he was schooling Trigger. Yes, but I didn't know Trigger was so smart for his age. Kid. Troy tried to tell you. Trigger is the best horse on the range. Perhaps now you're convinced. Who just arrived? Shall we quit now? No, we just as well wait and get fired.
Don't you think you're wasting a lot of time on that horse? Well, yes, but I sort of figured now that you're running things, you'd kind of string along with Trigger. He's worth it. He's got everything. Spirit, endurance, jumping ability, speed, and... And a good press agent. <laughs> he don't need one of those. From those rocks up there, down to the end of the road, it's exactly one-eighth of a mile. Check the time. seem to be pretty sure of yourself jumping him over my car. Well, I'm just sure of Trigger. Give her a kiss, Trigger. Come on, kiss her. Come on. Give her a kiss. <laughs> you win, Roy. <laughs> we'll turn him in with the others to complete his training. Well, Trigger, we've finally been forgiven. Come on, smile, Trigger. Smile. <laughs> <laughs> Did you teach him politeness to him? I didn't have to. He's just naturally a gentleman. Oh. <laughs> well, you'd better take lessons from Trigger. I thought you'd agree to my taking over the ranch. That's the easy way out. If you marry me, your worries will be over. How about it, Broadway? No, it's Main Street for me. I belong there. You change your mind. Vanity, mostly. I want to find out if I can wear bronze. Well, you've been swell to have for a friend. But you won't marry me. <sighs> no, I would have if... It's him. Pick the horses for the race tomorrow. Would you like to look them over? You still around, Rogers? Sure, I'm working for Miss Kim. Roy took over the training of the horses. Juan says with the job that he's done that we'll have the cavalry contract in the bag. One sort of a dream, Mr. Danvers. Mm -hmm. And I'm sort of a methodical guy. The last five years, I've gone after that contract and gotten it. We can't blame him for that, Roy. No. Best we can do is upset his schedule. You're going to have real competition with Trigger in the race tomorrow. You riding him, Roger? Sure. I don't suppose you'd wish me luck. As a matter of fact, I will. But you're gonna need it. The conditions of this race are in conformity with the plan we discussed. Now, in addition to the various jumps and slides, you will take your horses through a simulated gas attack and combat zone. Now, Brock Danvers will act as captain for the black team, and Roy Rogers of the Adams Ranch will captain the white team. That is all, gentlemen, and may the best team win. Both teams ready? Ready. Ready. Open the gate.
contract, Miss Adams. Signed, sealed, and delivered. If only Dad were here to see this. He'd be the happiest man in 48 states. And even more proud that his daughter came through with flying colors. It's been a pleasure to do business with you, Miss Adams. And I'm looking forward to my yearly visit here. Well, Mr. Ames, you can't leave now. Why, I insist that you stay here as my guest for our celebration. Celebration? Just another one of Dad's traditions. If our luck was good, then he always insisted that we celebrate. But if it was bad, then it was time to stage a big party to forget our troubles. I accept with the greatest of pleasure. Well, Juan, do you think your friends could help me put on a party that, that Dad would be proud of? Sort of, well, sort of hands across the border. I'm sure they'll be happy to miss Jim. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hands across the border, hands that say hello, and shake for all the
a nickel to my name The wolf and I are just about to meet But rich or poor, your pocket looks the same When your heart's on easy street The only clothes I own are out of press My only pair of shoes are not so neat But you can do with just a little less When your heart's on easy street What do I want with money? Another name for worry and care Oh, my life is milk and honey Have you ever seen a happy millionaire Complaining never does a bit of good And smiling is a trick that can't be beat You're living in a lovely neighborhood When your heart's on easy street Great. <laughs> Simply <laughs> fine. Thank you. And you, you were out of this world. May I shake your little hand, Mary? Thank you.
Across the border, calling me, calling me back. 